Now on EA Sports. Two wide receivers will be looking to be number one targets on the field in today's game. It's Brown Steelers going up against Hilton's Colts. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Just as we were ready for air, it was the Colts emerging from the locker room to great fanfare here in Indy. They're ready to go as the Colts get set to match up with Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers. And we say hi again, one and all. Brandon Gaughton here as we count you down to kick off. And I turn to my partner, that's Charles Davis. And Charles, I know even a former defensive back like you can admire some of the receivers in the game today. And Larry showed us a couple that are very likely to stand out in this one. Yeah, and it's hard for me to admit that I actually admire receivers. <laughs> but with their acrobatics, with their speed, with their moxie, and the way they go up and get the football, they can change the outcome of a game in an instant. to get us started now the kicker Chris Boswell the ball on the tee we're set for football that'll be taken in the end zone and he won't return this one he'll go down to a knee and they'll start at the 25 off a 300 yard performance last week in the win over Houston Jacoby Brissett takes the field along with the Indianapolis Colts offense and yes Houston was without Deshaun Watson with the injury but good win for Indianapolis yeah it's an excellent win for Indianapolis and let's face it we were all looking forward to Jacoby Brissett dueling with Deshaun Watson, two young, very talented quarterbacks. Tom Savage not quite up to the task for Houston. Brissett took great advantage of it. Here's the first carry now for Frank Gore. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And here are the Colts' offensive starters. When Frank Gore runs on the field, you do think that he's a model of consistency because he's played so well throughout his career. And year in and year out provides excellent numbers that help his team. But when I watch him play, what comes to mind for me is not just the consistency. It's how he attacks the game and how he respects the game. In fact, a general manager told me that when he drafts each and every year, what he looks for in every player is how does he relate to Frank Gore. He compares every player that he drafts to what Frank Gore puts on the field, and that's when he decides if he wants a player or not. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also moved the sticks. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving him a whole lot of credit and thanking him for that much space to rumble. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Now a handoff for Gore. And he'll take this for about four up to the 46-yard line. And this defensive line will be looking to control the point of attack. And that's what they've done throughout this season. This is a terrific unit. They play together very, very well, and they don't permit big plays to happen. And they're six yards away from picking up the first here on second down. This is Marlon Mack, the rookie from South Florida. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Five yards on the pickup, and that's going to bring up a third down. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. third down that's Mack and he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45 They're just four yards on the pickup but that's good enough to extend the drive 
I like the look that they just showed there. When you come out in a passing formation, spread things out a little bit, makes it really hard to cover the middle of the field, doesn't it? Because yeah. you've got to go out to the perimeter and cover those guys. Yep, exactly. Got some good blocking, too. Helped him pick up the first. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. handoff it's gore and he's going to be met at about the 43 give him a couple on the carry there second and eight that's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball held him to a gain of two and that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays second and eight now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game they'll try to throw now Brissett. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Here comes the seventh play of this opening drive. They've moved it well, but here's third down. From the gun, here's Bissett. It's complete here to T.Y. Hilton. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Eight yards on the pickup there, and it moves the sticks. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive, and they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down. They did. Big time pickup for them, and now I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone. Because the closer you get, to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. Makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. Slipped one tackle, but no more as he's knocked to the deck behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Well, forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he was able to hold on to the football. Now this will be the ninth play on this drive. A second down throw for Bissell. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. A good job defensively to hold that to four yards, and now it's third down. In order for a screen pass to break big, a lot of things have to come together and be well executed. But all it takes is one small thing to go wrong and keep it from being a big game. It's been a pretty long opening drive. This will be play number 11 coming up on third down. From the shotgun, it's Brissett. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys on plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive. It just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practice now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Stephon Tua came out at Notre Dame as another one of those really tall defensive ends, and you just wonder, would they be able to have the leverage to bend and make plays? I think he just gave us an answer with that tackle. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. Second down, Brissett throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Jack Doyle that time, and that'll make it third down. I know in every game we do, we talk about momentum. 
That was a momentum play lost. And now there could be a letdown because they didn't get the interception. Yeah, you could almost hear the collective gasp on the sideline as he could not come up with that football. The Colts on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third and 11. Come on, let's go! Ah! Out of the gun, Brissett. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off, it's the Pro Bowl corner. Joe Hayden with it. He's at the 50, the 40. Pass the 20, 10. And he's in for six and a Steeler touchdown. Well, it was third down defensively. They were just hoping to make a play and get off the field, get their offense on. Instead, they did one better. Pick it off, take it into the end zone. Well, they did what you said. They got they off did the get field. Off. They're going to have to come right back on. They're going to come right back on, but happily, right? They put the ball in the end zone. That's the way you start a game. That's the way you set the tone. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. And he'll put it through to make it 7-0 Steelers. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. The Steelers' defense getting ready here for this next possession. And a big reason they've got the lead here in the first half. Some of these hits we're going to see here. Almost like they're a group of superheroes, right? Something out of a comic book. Boom, pow, biff. They are really playing well and making things happen on their side of the ball. Taking me back to my childhood a bit. There you go. You had a collection, didn't you? I did. Flag out right away, and I believe our day will begin with a first and 15. They expect this from the visiting team when playing indoors, but not the home team. They're supposed to get all the advantages, right? The home crowd's supposed to help them. They forgot where they were, perhaps. It's Gore, and he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. And our statistician, Ben Ramsar, just held up three fingers to remind me he now has three tackles for a loss rolling in the first quarter. Well, Ben's got it detailed perfectly. He always gives us the right stats. I'd love to be on the offense's headset right now because what you're hearing is, can someone please block him? Come up with a scheme. Come up with something. Make sure you block him because he's disrupting everything. Again, they run. Again, it's Gore. 
And he'll power his way up near the 25. Five yards gets him back near the original line of scrimmage as he'll be left with a third and long. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. The Colts on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and 11. Here we go. Here we go. Throwing. Brissett. He's going to air one out. This is caught inside the 15. It's a big conversion on third for the Colts. 63 yards. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield, those guys made that play possible. Complete. He was looking for Daniels that time, and that'll bring up second down. Well, not to get too overcritical there, because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Now on second down, this is Gore. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Frank Gore, a 13-yard touchdown run. And the Colts are an extra point away from tying up this football game. And on his way to the end zone, shedding the tackle, he would not be denied. That's what's called finishing the run, making sure you power your way through. One-on-one -on -one tackle, no running back wants to go to the bench and say, ah, I got stopped just short. Now Adam Vinatieri for the point after. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So the drive there, five plays, 80 yards. And it ends with a Frank Gore touchdown run. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This fielded at the two. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. So out come the Steelers now for their first drive. They'll be led out by a man who's becoming an elder statesman among quarterbacks in the league, drafted back in 04. It's Ben Roethlisberger. Is it really true that last year he became just the 10th player in NFL history, the top 300 career touchdown How passes? About that? I mean, where is time gone? I feel like it, it was his rookie year, and he had that great winning streak to start off his career with the Pittsburgh Steelers. But the best part about his game, two Super Bowl rings. And his fifth Pro Bowl a year ago as well. Now a carry for the former Michigan State man, Le'Veon Bell. Bell so light on his feet. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. All told, it's an even 30 and a first down. 
dance class, anyone? <laughs> Did you see the steps between the quarterback and the running That's back what you on need that for counter a good play? Counter. You have to have it because you're setting up your blocking. There's a timing element as well, but they have to marry up their steps. Otherwise, that timing gets thrown out the window. Timing was great there and a big run. And the offense lining up first and ten. And they'll keep it on the ground with Bell. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. And a peek now at the offense for Pittsburgh. Antonio Brown just defies convention because when you look at his build, you see a slot receiver, a short, shifty guy, but he makes many of his plays on the outside part of the field like one of the taller, rangier receivers in the league. Excellent route runner, tremendous hands, and fantastic with the ball in his hands after the catch. Antonio Brown's one of the best ones out there. Now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. Got his man complete over the middle. That's James. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. And on third down, the Colts have added an extra defensive back. Flooding the passing lanes. They'll try and run for it with Bell. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards. Back to the 33. He loses four. And it brings up four. And partner, in a lot of short yardage situations, you'll see the linebackers step up into the gaps, what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, to make sure they take away all spaces, all creases. That one worked really well for them. Now only needed a yard, instead went backwards. Now Chris Boswell for the Steelers field goal try. They'll put it down right at the 40, so call this a 50-yard attempt. And Boswell's kick is good. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. A little bit of a lower trajectory there on the deep kick, and it worked. Had to do it because he had to drive it out low because of the length of the kick. Able to do that, got it above the defense, and over the post. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Here we go. One, nine. One, nine. 
Now a play fake here on first down. Going deep for Moncrief. And got his man complete. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. We just saw him hit a big play there on a deep post. And most of the time, the post isn't available because you usually have defenders in the middle of the field. But if you throw enough curls and crossing routes and underneath routes, <laughs> I know from experience, they get tired of watching those balls get caught. They start to creep up a little bit, and that's when you can hit them big over the top. set on first down. Over the middle, that's caught by Hogan. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. minute to go clock running at a back and forth first quarter of play Brissett now on second down over the middle complete that's Doyle and this time not quite to the 30 it'll be down at the 31 yard line the reception good for seven it's third down Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. The offense on third down tonight, they've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. They're looking at third and a few inches. Let's go! Red, nine, eight, They'll try and pick up the first with Gore. Gore, a first down and then some. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. One corner in the books. 10 7 our score. We'll return after this message. You're watching the NFL, and it's right here on EA Sports. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. The Colts in possession of the football to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and 10. to the 14. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. I think Cameron Hayward's ability to take on blocks, hold the point of attack, and get upfield serves him very, very well. What a nice play there. Yeah, he can take on blocks because he's built like a block. quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. One yard officially on the pickup and it'll leave him with a third and 11. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. On third down, Brissett. This is going to be incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. Good. And that will not us up at 10. 
let's face it, when Adam Vinatieri actually misses a field goal, that's when we're surprised. We're not as all shocked that he made this one. Of course, he has the record 44 straight field goal makes. He closed out 2015 making 25 and then started 2016 with 19 in a row. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. They'll start out on the ground with Bell. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. Well, that play was doomed right from the start. They just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. Second down, it's Bell. And some room to run now. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. They get nine yards back on the run there, and they're left with a much more makeable third and two. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. On third down, here's Bell. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was looking for his big tight end there, Jesse James. And that'll bring up second down. I want to switch gears for a second. A couple exciting plays last week in the NFL. One you and I were discussing earlier. How about that Tyree Kill play into the first half in Dallas? Yeah, we usually use the word gate with everything, right? Now it's Mary when it's big plays like this. So this is the Hill Mary, isn't it? <laughs> Putting that big wall in front of him. But how about the moves, the elusiveness to break that play against Dallas? Absolutely amazing. And then Sammy Watkins for the Rams. Yeah. Third and 30 plus. <laughs> Not only did he convert, he scores a touchdown against the Giants in New York. And the first time someone in the NFL has converted a third and 30 plus in the 21st century. Hard to believe. down carry by Bell and they go backwards here losing yardage back at the 48 yard line it's a loss of two there bringing up second down 
Yeah, and that was a safety that came through and made the play, but there's no doubt in my mind, he hits like a linebacker, and we see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time, we do indeed a big hit for a loss. Second down, Roethlisberger. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there of 20 yards. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Burger going to hand the bell, and he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Every year I go to the combine to marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs, and let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. Second down, here's Roethlisberger. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. Third and long. The swing pass caught. And he doesn't quite make it. They do stop him, but he gets it all the way down to the one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. You know, when I see passes like that, I'm reminded of something you and I talked about yesterday. Big Ben was a wide receiver the first three years of high school, sitting behind the coach's son. And then he finally got that opportunity. I think he's made the most of it. It's always the coach's son, isn't it? But you know where it helps him? When he looks downfield, he knows what the receivers are going to do. He actually has wide receivers' eyes when he's throwing the ball. They'll try to run it in with Bell. And he's in. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Le'Veon Bell punching it in from a yard away. And the Steelers are going to take the lead. And there you go. Nothing really too complex. Block, keep to your assignments, let them run it in. They did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking. Beats good tackling on that play. And result, touchdown. He's got it as they go up by a total of 17 to 10. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it ends with a Le'Veon Bell touchdown run. Boswell on now to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. <laughs> there again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And a lot of times you talk about establishing the ground game 
Probably something they need to do more of here losing in the second quarter. When you're riding your best horse, you've got to lather him up. The best running backs I've ever talked to, they've all said the exact same thing to me. I'll even break a good sweat until I get to 20 carries. You're full of good wisdom. Let's see if they can get him into the game more now. Start on the ground with Gore. Able to shake free for about seven up to the 35. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. first down on a gain of 10. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back, oh, he gets lost, you can't find him, and sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen, the defensive line guy's trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost, but this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. They go play action here on first down. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. A place like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from it. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. up to the 41 yard line on any running play that's called they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance but when you get a nice game like that you're able to do so many things anyway you can come back and run essentially the same play again continue to move the ball on the ground or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels come on let's go what nine. off the play fake here's percent try to lay one up deep he rifles one that's intercepted. Sean Davis with a pick, and he's able to get it back to the 41-yard line. So it's third and long, and you know this is going to be a pass. So defensively, they're bringing an extra defensive back and just blanking the field. And this is an ill-advised throw right here as it winds up being picked off easily. Beyond Bell making his way back out onto the field now. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. After the interception, here's Roethlisberger. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. Al Woods. Break 
looking throw to get him for a loss of seven. Well, you don't usually get a sack from a nose tackle spot, but we got one there. No, we don't. And a lot of the times in passing situations, they end up off the field anyway. So how happy was he to work his way back to the quarterback and put him on the ground? He's going to have to put a nickname after something like that, some big jelly or something like that. <laughs> From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. And that pressure gets to him again. John Simon in there to get him. And this pass rush strong now. That sacks on back-to-back -back plays. So, Brandon, we sat in with a lot of coaches. And when they talk about things they want to accomplish offensively, I'm not sure that sack and sack are on their play sheet. the sack and now a third and long situation for the Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger. From the gun it's Roethlisberger. Now he'll let it go deep over the middle. Well this is taken in it's complete and he'll be taken down but not before he gets into enemy territory. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. There's no doubt about it. That's just one of the best connections in the league. Big Ben throwing it to Antonio Brown. And Antonio Brown has turned himself into such a player. A low round draft pick, but you can't beat his determination or work ethic. And Big Ben welcomes that. And Big Ben won a Super Bowl at 23. Youngest ever to do so. Has never looked back. Roethlisberger with a give to Bell. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Two minutes to play here in the first half. We'll come back to Indianapolis right after this. Coming up at halftime, remember, we'll get you out to Larry Ridley in Orlando for highlights and analysis of this first half. That is, of course, unless you decide to skip him. And for the record, we do not encourage that. Four yards remaining now on second down. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. This is Bell on the dump off. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense. A little too much extracurricular there. When you have a game with a lot of contact, tensions are going to run pretty high. You're going to be emotional, but you have to harness it somehow, and he didn't on that play. So here we go, first and ten now. Here's Roethlisberger. A swing pass caught. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Jesse James, 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Steelers find a way to stretch their lead. 
boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. Boswell for the extra point. And the lead is up to 14. Five plays there on that drive. And it ends with a Pittsburgh touchdown. Boswell on now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Frank Gore and company trotting back out there as they get set to go again on offense. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. T.Y. Hilton, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. Well, on that incompletion, let's discuss how week nine on Sunday, November 5th, there was a full moon. And there yes. were some full moon happenings in the NFL, wasn't there? There certainly were. And think about it this way. Blair Walsh, who was 16 for 17 in field goals when the game began against Washington. He missed three for Seattle in that game. Might have been the difference. Julio Jones. Yeah, drop pass in the end zone. They could have won the game. When does Julio Jones drop passes, especially open as he was there? And how about two teams putting 51 points on the board? The Los Angeles Rams against the Giants. And, of course, Philadelphia did it against Denver. Denver, the number one defense in the league. Full moon. So the offense has it first and 10. Reset. That is throw is incomplete. Well, with that pass going awry, Charles, I hate to discuss this, but we need to. Deshaun Watson goes down with an injury, ACL tear done for the season, and boy, that's tough. It is extremely tough, especially when we do everything possible to protect players in practice, to make sure you have good practices, no injuries, and it just happened on a routine, normal play. And when he gets back, he will make the same exact movements again. Just a freak injury, and now the Texans, that's gonna be tough. The number one scoring offense with him, they really struggled against Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, they did, just 14 points. Really nice response from Watson, though, saying he's gonna come back stronger than ever. And how about the response from the league? How about the respect he garnered in his short time as the quarterback? The Colts on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This is third and 10. Let's go! Five, five. Reset again. And that's incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. The Colts send out their punter. Back deep for the Steelers, Antonio Brown. Oh, 
He gets it away, and I think they'll smartly play keep away here from Brown. Here comes Ben Roethlisberger and the Steeler offense back onto the field. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot. Maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. First and ten, it's Roethlisberger. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. All right, you ready to go on a tangent with me here real Let's quick? Let's go. Let's go. We were discussing off air the top five picks in the 2016 draft. Boy, those guys are having good seasons, aren't they? They really nailed that one, didn't they? And you go right to the top because Jared Goff, many people wanted to call a bust last year. Oh, no, not at all. The Rams are 6-2. and two. He's playing awfully well as their quarterback. Carson Wentz continues to ascend in Philadelphia. Joey Bosa, nowhere to escape, and he goes down. And now here's a timeout called by the Colts on the defensive side of the ball. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. So the sack and now a third and long situation for the Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger. The give is to Bell. And another timeout taken by the Colts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. On fourth down, here comes a Steeler punter, Jordan Berry, to kick it away. Chester Rogers, deep for Indianapolis. That's taken on the 25. Six-yard return after a punt of 48. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. And the Colts getting ready to go. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. A dump off here for Gore. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. First down, Brissett. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. 
Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Kamar Aiken, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. And guess what? That incompletion gives me a chance to ask you who your MVP is in oh, the really? NFL right really? now. Who are you going with? Well, there's so many different choices, right? Tom Brady's a perennial, and you could never go wrong with him, and he's still rallying New England. He's got but, too many trophies. Oh, look, Give me somebody you know, else. Look at you. you can't sing him for that. But uh, listen, to me, it comes down to Carson Wentz in Philadelphia having an extraordinary second season. And what Alex Smith is doing in Kansas City cannot be overestimated right now. And I'm going to go with Alex Smith because head-to-head, -head, his Kansas City Chiefs beat the Philadelphia Eagles. And that's true. If the Eagles, though, 8-1 and one right now. Should be interesting to watch the rest of the way. Sounds like you're making a case for Carson Wentz. I am. Now the set. Caught left side by Hilton. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. Speaking of Mr. T.Y. Hilton, he had a great game last week against the Texans. They certainly did. 175 yards, two touchdowns. But let's be honest, partner. When he sees Houston... His game just elevates, doesn't it? He's had 11 career games against him, if I'm looking at the numbers right, over 1,100 yards and nine scores. And likely time for one final play here in the half, so they will go for it on fourth down. Let's go! They'll throw now on the final play. He's going to float this one deep right side. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. So we've reached halftime here with the visiting Steelers out in front. As we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Charles. And welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The Colts are behind right now, but the home crowd should give them a boost. The Steelers will want to come out after the half and really put the pressure on from the start. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Colts have it midway through one. Here the defense will come up with the pick. Steelers take it back all the way for the score. As they take a 7-0 lead. Colts on offense, first quarter winding down. Gore is gonna look for a gap, and this five play drive goes for a touchdown. Third and long, we're brand new at seven. Roethlisberger's on point with the throw, and he'll be tackled at the one yard line. Steelers now later on the drive. On the run, this is Le'Veon Bell. And he caps off the drive on this run. Steelers is up now by seven. Late in the second, the pass ends up being picked off. Davis in position, and he is the one who comes away with the ball. After the pick, offense comes out now. It's Roethlisberger to his big tight end. That's Jesse James. And this four-play drive goes for a touchdown. Lead now at 14. So that'll do it from here. Let's get back out to Brandon and Charles. They've got the second half from Indy. Brandon. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because... What you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team. That Their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. Still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? 
The second half starts with a carry by Bell. A gain of three, second down. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Seven yards to go on second down. Roethlisberger over the middle here to Brown and he'll get it up near the 35 right at the 34 here six yards is the pickup and that'll lead to a third down well clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height sit back in the pocket fired over the middle that makes things tougher defensively doesn't it it really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed but when you have that type of height he can stay in there if he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. And he finds McDonald. 20, 10, and into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Vance McDonald, 66 yards. And the Steelers are going to add on to their lead. Still plenty of time left in the game, but now starting to pull away a little bit. Get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation. But I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game, you know, the second half, no matter what, whether it's first five minutes, first three, whatever, this was a big score to start the second half. Extra point now by Boswell. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. So a 75-yard scoring drive on just three plays. And it ends with the Steelers finding the end zone. Boswell on now to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, half? Most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. They'll try and start the drive here with Gore. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. But if these guys are going to chop into that deficit, they got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage would be found. And the offense will be looking to get at least some of this yardage back here. It's second and 12. Let's go! One, nine, back to the workhorse today. It's Gore. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. Not the start to the drive they were looking for. That run doesn't do much at all. No, not at all, and it leaves them with third and long, and you know this is the time of game where these drives really, really start to matter. They've got to make some moves. The Colts on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. This is third and nine. Here we go. Brandon. On 
on play action. Brissett, he's going to float this one deep right side. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. Well, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. The Colts send out their punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. Now Brown. Oh, look at that. Oh, what a move. A good return there. 17 yards. And the Steelers will go on offense here. First and 10. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They had the double-digit lead at halftime, and they have continued to roll. They're hard to stop right now. I think what we're seeing is an example of a team that has it figured out in this ball game. And whatever the adjustments are the defense has made, <laughs> hasn't slowed them, him. hasn't phased them at all. They either anticipated them or they've been so far ahead that they just can't catch up. Now it's just a search to add to the lead. They'll start the drive with a carry by Bell. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. So, Brandon, when this offense gathers together to watch tape for this game, they're going to be feeling pretty good about themselves until the coaches get upset about the play we just saw. But you know their defense is going to be. But we put up big points all game long. The defense is going to win one every now and then. Berger to throw on second down. And his pass incomplete. That one didn't quite make it to the target, but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback, is it? Sometimes it's just too much pressure there. In any case, the ball doesn't arrive. The Steelers on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third down and 12. Here's Roethlisberger to throw. Over the middle, it's caught by Rodgers. And he's brought down, but following a pretty juke move that gives him the first down. Roethlisberger finding Rodgers, and the Steelers convert on third down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Fresh set of downs here. Now a play fake here on first down. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's James. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That one goes for 24 yards. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. On the counter, here's Bell. And now running right through it. Space to run past the 20. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10 to the 7. A big hitter there, a first down gain of 26 yards. It's funny, partner. Le'Veon Bell, when he came out of Michigan State, when I go back and look at my analysis of him and what my grades were for him, thought he was a big-time player, great potential. But I didn't know we were going to get this player. I was used to a big, solid, thick running back. 
But now I've got a full package, a guy who can do everything, as we just saw there, including breaking tackles. But at the time, second round pick in 2013, some people probably wishing they'd taken him in the first. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. carry for James Conner and a little bit of space there takes it inside the five to the three it'll be a pickup of four and it brings up second and goal they're trying to show that they can run the ball protect this lead give it to the backs play a little bit of keep away don't you think and that's probably a good philosophy at this point going to make that defense stand up and stop them Try to run it. This is Connor pushing and fighting his way in for a Steeler touchdown. A great effort there. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Steelers find a way to stretch their lead. We got a little bit of everything on that run. Offensive line creating some space. But how about the guy running behind his pads into the end zone? What does that mean when a guy says running behind his pad? It means that he's going to be a physical runner. That way he's able to use his shoulder pads, his forearms, anything to ward off people to power his way forward. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So this drive spans seven plays, and it ends with a three-yard scoring run. Boswell on now to kick this one away. This fielded at the two. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. And our focus now shifts to Frank Gore. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defensive front. Instead of the linebackers being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging the line of scrimmage, okay. Yeah, in this case, First down, it's Gore. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set him up. Gore. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles. Because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Here we go. Play action now. Brissett. And this one is incomplete. They have not gotten him going at all. Tried to spark something there with a longer throw. Unable to complete it. But you have to keep trying. He's one of their best playmakers. No matter what it says on the scoreboard, you're always trying to get him the football. The Colts send out their punter as he's on here to punt it away. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. 
Getting set to go again, Ben Roethlisberger heading back out there. He's played well. Good first half. He's continued that here in the third quarter. But my question, when you're a head coach, what do you look at stat line-wise for your court? Do you go right to turnovers? You really do. As much as coaches don't want to talk about that, that's where it starts. When I played in college, our first rule for every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. And that's kind of how they judge you. Do you take care of the ball, not turn it over, keep it in the proper hands, and give your team a chance to win? Well, that's what he's done here in this one so far. Now it's Roethlisberger. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Brown. And he's brought down after a good gain. And a nice gain of 21 yards. I know everyone wants that prototypical wide receiver, you know, the 6'3", 200-plus pound guy, like a Julio Jones and A.J. Green and Des Bryant. Antonio Brown just shatters that, doesn't he? Smaller in stature, but still able to use his quickness, his elusiveness, and his strength to create big plays. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Roethlisberger will throw. Pass incomplete. He was looking to hit his running back, Le'Veon Bell, that time. And it's second down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And very little daylight there. He'll get a couple up to the 44. And the Steelers on third down. They've been very good. Five for seven thus far. This is third and eight. To throw here, Roethlisberger. And he's got Rodgers. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. 11 more on that one and another first down. But they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate after that last run. Found his spot and picked up nice yardage, didn't he? And now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Roethlisberger will hand to Connor. They'll get it inside the red zone, but only for a couple down to the 19. You know how we get focused at end of the half and end of the game situations about how much time's on the board and, you know, what you need to do? Sometimes you don't even have to worry about that. That's just smart football. You know, that kind of a lead, staying in bounds, it burns clock, even in a situation that we're not really focused on it. Again, it's Connor. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game, but what a nice play by the defense. Stepping up on that one, maybe they'll get things going in their direction after a play like that. Steelers on third down. They've hit on six of their eight tries. Very good. This is third and nine. Now Roethlisberger. This is caught. And he's going to take it in 
in for a Steeler touchdown. Jesse James, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And this Steelers offense is running away with this one. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Boswell for the extra point. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it ends with a Pittsburgh touchdown. Boswell on now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? so tough because we always talk about it being a team game and you need all 11 working well together but every now and then partner you need that one guy who can make a play against all odds that maybe can ignite things and I think that's what they're looking for right now yeah you talk about going to your playmakers they probably need to do it find someone that you're used to touching the football that makes big plays and give them that opportunity to maybe wake up everyone else they go play action here on first down. To the right side to Aiken. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Carry number 20 for Frank Gore. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Let's see what the offense comes with here. Second and eight. Here we go. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Single, 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 single. Oh, Complete the contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they were unsuccessful. The Colts send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And he gets this away. And look at this. This is a good one. do it for this third quarter of action we'll return with more after this this is the nfl and it's on ea sports 
Back now in Indianapolis. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. Give to Bell, and he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Brand is all about pace and tempo now for them. They've got the advantage, so I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lenta. What you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady. Get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> A fake to Bell. Now it's Roethlisberger. He's going deep for Brown. He's got a man complete. The 20, 10, and into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Antonio Brown, 81 yards. And this Steelers offense, they continue to pour it on. You have fun with this one, partner? I am. I mean, he's been fun to watch under center. We always talk about, you know, getting to the next level, right? When we see people get into the zone, this guy's in the master class right now. What a performance he's putting on, just carving him up. Four touchdown passes, carving him up is right. Seems like everything he throws is going to be a completion and going in the end zone. Extra point now by Boswell. Now this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. The quick strike ability certainly intact there. Two plays, 80 yards to score it. Boswell on now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Set to throw on first. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Second down following the incompletion. Here's Brissett. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. 23 yards on the play.
So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. We're set on first down. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. It doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, They move and they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary, and I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open probably because of his movement out of the pocket. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, Big man with football. <laughs> Work out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You talk about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But, boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. Now the offense lining up first and 10. On, now we've got whistles and a flag. Looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. Ball start offense. And that'll set him back five. up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Encroachment the defense. So a jump there defensively. And it's a killer. Watch the football. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. He's going to air one out. Now he's got his target. It's caught for a Colts touchdown. Kamar Aiken, 37 yards. And the Colts gain a bit of respectability. And that touchdown, well, it barely puts a dent in this lead. And unfortunately, I'm having too many flashbacks right now. I remember getting beat down like this playing before. Oh, yeah, college, high school. College, not a heck of a lot of fun. I still remember playing and trying to tackle an elusive tailback who ended up scoring four touchdowns, 226 yards. He scored so many times and had so many great runs, I knew every note to their school's fight song. That that ice bath felt extra cold afterwards, too. Oh, yeah. oh, oh no, there was no ice bath. You're just trying to get out of there before the reporters got to you. And they make the score a little bit more respectable here in our final quarter of play. So that drive spanned five plays. And the result for the Colts is a touchdown. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is taken at his four. <laughs> and not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. 
Back onto the field now comes the wideout Antonio Brown. Seems like the measuring stick for a receiver for a great game is 100 yards. Well, he's well past that now. And as we analyze how he's getting him, that's where it really becomes fun because, let's face it, they keep sending coverage at him, keep trying to put the pressure on, yet he finds ways downfield and finds openings. That's a really crafty receiver. Here's Bell, and he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. They'll go again with Bell. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they're able to just roam and hit. Here's Roethlisberger. He's going deep for Brown. In a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Vontae Davis. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Their passing game has been spectacular this afternoon. Finally, a win for the defense. You think maybe there was an adjustment there. Finally gained a measure of, uh, I don't even know if you call it revenge, but got a play done against him, and that's been difficult for them all game long. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. From the gun, here's Brissett. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Give the Colts 13 yards in a first down. Over to the right side, caught by Moncrief. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. So here we go, first and ten now. Let's go! Brian 38! Brian 38! Out of the gun, Brissett. Throw left side complete. It's Doyle. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow. A six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. The quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. First down, Brissett. And that's complete. It's the tight end, Daniels. 
And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. I think it's okay there they didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily, put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Second down to the offense needing five yards. Now we've got whistles and a flag. Looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. So that'll back him up five. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. Here I go. Brissett again. His throw incomplete. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but... They took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. The Steelers insert their nickel defense on third down. Yeah, they add a DB. Let's go! Brand 38! Brand 38! They'll throw again. Brissett. The swing pass caught. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. And now a first down following that long gain. They come up in an offset on. eye. They'll try and push it in with Gore. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Frank Gore, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Colts are in for six. Now he's doing his part, but still facing a sizable deficit. And he would like to do more. But he needs help from the other two-thirds, right? He needs his defense to bow up a little bit. And he also needs special teams to maybe create some big plays and help them get back in it. Vinatieri now to tack on the PAT. And that'll cut the lead down to 28. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it ends with a Frank Gore touchdown run. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This will be fielded at the six. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They built up that lead at intermission. And they're just continuing to pour it on right now, aren't they? Locked into a really good groove right now. I don't know if it's just the play calling. I know the execution is really, really sharp right now. And all the playmakers are doing exactly what you expect. They're making plays. And right now, defense has no answer and no chance of catching up. Now they're just looking to turn anywhere for a stop defensively. Double tight. Double tight. We got three. We got three, fellas. We got three. 
This is Bell. And it worked his way across the 30 to the 32. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Again, it's Bell. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. So the offense has it first and 10. Bell. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Now it's Connor. And he'll take this up over the 40 to about the 41. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. And the Steelers on third down. And they've been really good converting seven of their ten tries. This is third and seven. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Open man, Smith-Schuster, it's complete. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and take and go like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. Fresh set of downs here. That's going to set him back five yards. Still first down. So the penalty by the offense, and now they face a first and 15. After the penalty, it's Bell. And a good pick up there. He gets about six up to midfield. Hey, when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Nine yards still remaining here to pick up the first on second down. Accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still second down. They'll run it with Bell. 
And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a third down. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. And the Steelers on third down. They've had plenty of success. Eight conversions, looking for a nine. This is third and nine. Now it's Roethlisberger. He gets it to Brown, complete. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. And they have just about put this one on ice as they've got it here first and ten. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Now Bell. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Nice job by the defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. So what will they do on the ground through the air? Let's see. Second and nine. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Still second down. Offense needs something here on second down. It is second and long. Now a handoff here to his running back. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Give him four on the carry there, but that only takes him back to where they started. Third and ten. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Well, this drive, they're a perfect two of two on third down conversions, but they need a full ten yards here. And to give this time to the tailback. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I think this defense tired of seeing him run the football, and this D-line probably getting sick of the O-line as well. And as I'm watching this, I'm thinking about a conversation I had with Adam Gase, the head coach of the Miami Dolphins in the offseason. He told me that he asked his running backs each week for their favorite runs. Give me your three top runs. And right now, you're seeing a guy that's probably using his top runs to great advantage in this game. He is in a zone. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL.
With that, we say so long from Indy.